meeting of the Hadley Public Schools. Um, we are going to, uh, let's see, entertain a motion to open the meeting. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, great. Um, Annie, can you highlight the uh, adjustments to the agenda, please? Yes, so in the agenda, which is available on uh, the website to the public, um, it uh, every shaded area is an adjustment from when it was originally posted at Town Hall. We will be reviewing and I'll be seeking approval for a position of safe schools and uh, DEI support specialist. I will update you on the NEASC accreditation. We do not have a negotiations update. Um, because we are no longer in negotiations. I neglected to take that off the agenda. And um, we do need to, there's some action items that were added, approval of tech upgrades. Mr. Big Doe will be reviewing those with you. Approval of the nature of classroom field trip. Ms. Duncan will be presenting that first. And then um, should you approve the position, I'm also asking that you approve it being funded with ESSER funding fiscal year 23. And there's no executive session. Okay, let's dive into it then. Um, we'll start with public comment. Um, and uh, public comment should be no more than three minutes and um, directly pertaining to items on the agenda. Um, if you are interested in making a comment, go ahead and raise your digital hand and we will unmute you. Okay, seeing none, let's proceed with the presentation presentation and discussion items. Uh, item A, nature's classroom field trip. Welcome, Ms. Duncan. Hi, how is everybody? Great, thank you. Great, so um, I would like to start to take the seventh grade back to nature's classroom again this year after not going for a few years. Mm -hmm. um, we would continue to go to um, the Ocean Park main site. Uh, however, we did lose our original date. So right now um, the dates are for the last three days of school. I'm hoping we get a snow day in there, maybe one or two, two would be perfect. Um, so it's not the actual last three days of school. Um, but um, is ever, so Nature's Classroom is a hands-on outdoor learning experience for the, the kids that is a combination of um, team building, um, uh, learning to work together, um, cross-curricular activities, um, we include science, math, um, uh, civics, and English into the curriculum for the three days. And so they, is everybody familiar with Nature's Classroom? I, I know I've presented this a few times, so I don't want to like keep presenting the same thing. Does anybody have any questions? Well, helpful for the viewing public, definitely, especially those who haven't been following along. But what I think most of us, perhaps Ethan, my, with, with the exception of you, your kids are still at the elementary school. Is that right? That's right. Um, most of us have experienced nature's cl mm -hmm. classroom or, or through our children. And uh, I can tell you that I've not met one kid who's <laughs> sad about going to nature's classroom. It's a much uh, uh, acclaimed trip and probably the longest and the most sort of like the first big overnight trip in their young academic careers. Um, you do a really great job with this and I'm really so happy to see it come back post COVID. Um, I don't have any questions. I'm going to ask my colleagues if they have any questions on this. No, no I think this is a reminder. Sorry. Oh, well, just sorry. as a reminder for the public that the link is live in the agenda. They can read the, the very thorough uh, request that Ms. Duncan, it's the exemplar of requests for a field trip that she puts together for us. So the public can see that, Ms. Duncan. Great. And even from a, a chaperone point of view, it was it was great. We had a, a fantastic time. Uh, even you know, if the weather didn't hold out, there was plenty of things for the kids to do and learn. And um, I loved it. I think the kids really got a lot out of it. Yeah, like you, Numera, I've heard nothing but good things, and I know my kids had great experience. Annie, I guess I'm just. Curious, I know Susan, you mentioned this, the timing's not great. Is there, 
Do you have any concerns from a broader school perspective about the timing here? I don't. I do trust Susan Duncan is a veteran teacher. The other teachers that work with her on this are also, I do trust their judgment in the principal. And I did write down that you have put in an order for two snow days. I'll see what I can do. <laughs> you. That's not this week. If any students watch this. Um, so no, I think that um, I, I have complete faith that the teachers and principal will determine what makes the most sense in terms of time. We would just run uh, the last week of school before nature's classroom as like their last week um, to get stuff done and with due dates and that sort of thing to for makeup work. Um, and then, you know, it could be a nice reward that they get everything done and they are last three days are at nature's classroom. That'd be nice. And because uh, it's seventh grade, it won't run into any kind of finals for the students. No. I, I just have uh, one one question. I see the Board of Trustees is covering 5,000 of the transportation cost. The estimated cost is 365. For any students that are unable to pay that, or if that's ever been an issue, is there fundraising that's done or a scholarship that's available? Um, any just questions along those lines? Yes, we do do fundraising. We do two fundraisers, one um, that goes the overall cost of the trip, um, and then one that goes to individual costs that kids can raise. Um, and some kids raise the whole cost of their trip. We also do have um, scholarship money that through the school that kids can apply for. Um, well, not really apply. They just let me know. And then I let um, Dr. McKenzie know like the list of students that need help. So it's really available for everyone. Anybody who wants to go can go. There's money should never be the issue that they don't go. Perfect. So now that I'm out of the loop and I no longer get hit up for fundraisers, please send me an email. And I, you, you know, I love that. Are you still doing popcorn? Oh yeah, we're doing the popcorn again. Okay. That's always Hit me up. there. And they get 50% of the proceeds for that one. So that was a great fundraiser. So definitely hit me up for that. Thank you, Susan, for um, ensuring that it's a really great educational experience as well as an affordable one that all students can take part in. And a really big thank you to the Hopkins trustees for again, funding a, a learning uh, excursion like this. They're so valuable and we really appreciate their assistance. We really appreciate it because transportation went up like more than double. It was like triple oh. what it was three years ago. It was crazy how much it went up. I was up. gonna say that seems really expensive. Yeah, yeah, it was really, really, really expensive. Um, the The transportation. Yeah. The program itself and the years we've done it, I think it's only gone up like fifty dollars <laughs> to sixty dollars since, wow. um, which is crazy. Yeah, it's barely gone up the actual program right. fee. Yeah, the benefits of Maine, rural Maine. Terrific. Um, well, we need a motion. Um, so, um, would anyone like to um, first uh, a motion? I make I'll a motion. Move. Okay. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, motion passes. Thank you, Ms. Duncan. Yeah, thanks, Thank Ms. You. Duncan. Thank yeah. you. Thanks, Susan. Have a good night. Thanks for you being here. All right, we're moving on to the presentation on the proposed tech and security upgrades. Um, and we have um, our technology director, Steve Bigda here. Welcome, Steve. Thank um, you. Over to you. Okay. Um, so the hot ticket item these days is school security. Um, that is pretty much on the forefront of every tech director's agenda. Um, tonight I bring to you a presentation about securing um, both our campuses in the way we're going to do that and probably have it in a, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a multi-phase um, project form. So um, are, are you all looking at the presentation or, or do you want me to screen share it? Uh, we're looking at it and for the viewing public, it's available on, the, um, okay. on our agenda. Okay. So uh, the company we're, we're looking at going with is Fricata. They're about a 10 year old startup company out of San Mateo, California. Um, we have a designated team that works with us. Um, they basically group it out by regions in the United States. Um, so we, we've had many conversations, uh, Chris and myself. So sorry to do this. 
so sorry to interrupt. I realized that sometimes when watching the recording, it's actually helpful to see the presentation. Um, so would you mind sharing? Oh, yeah. No, I can. Yeah, I, I, it's here. Thank it's here. you. Everybody seeing that now? Yes, thanks. OK. All right. So. Um, so yeah, so so they've been in business over ten years. Um, I've used a few of the cameras in my previous roles in higher education, um, which I've been in for like the last twenty five years. So so really good products, um, trusted platforms, um, scalability, things like that. So so again, I, I've met with the principals. Um, each campus seems to have their own need and specific set of circumstances that they would like to address via the building security. And um, so so we're looking at doing that first. So the first thing. Um, is getting campus coverage via um, cameras. Right now, Hopkins has one camera and Hadley Elementary School has four cameras. Um, the four cameras that are located at Hadley Elementary School are <clears throat> basically um, outdated and old and they're, they're easily hackable. So they need to come out regardless of what's happening. Um, there's basically a, a bulletin saying, if you have these cameras, um, there's actually some money out there that you can apply for to get rid of these and get new cameras in place. So, so that's kind of the driving force behind this too. Um, the main driving force is obviously the safety and security of our students and our staff and our faculty. Um, let's see here. So company, like I said, uh, more about them. Um, basically this, this picture here tells you how much they can actually do um, through their, their um, products. They have environmental sensors, video security, access control, uh, guest management um, at bigger schools and bigger districts. That's that's a huge thing. And intrusion detection, which you know at bigger schools is also a, a hot ticket item. Um, so my goal is to get all of our security into a single pane of glass. Meaning, you know, we have one screen you're looking at. You get all your information from the screen. Um, phase two of this project potentially being the building access and card control for the doors, the swipe control. Um, that way everything coincides with what the camera see. So you get a swipe, you get a register swipe, you have camera um, documentation to back that up. So um, really good, you know, future scalability, things like that. Um, consolidated infrastructure, uh, single user management, basically IT supported. You can basically hand out access to anyone. Um, obviously that'll be determined um, through policies. Um, you can share a camera. So if there's a live event going on, you need to share it with public safety. You can click a link, share it with whomever. Um, we'll also have access control set up for emergency situations, things like that. Um, basically the process is getting every piece of their equipment to work with every other piece of equipment. So, you know, listed here, like I said, they have cameras, they have access control sensors. Um, those are the three things that we're mainly looking at starting with. Um, and here you can see that uh, you can monitor them from anywhere, it's cloud-based. Uh, the cameras themselves are built in. We're going with a 30 day retention policy. Um, that seems to be the norm for K through 12 institutions. Um, obviously the more retention you want, uh, the more you will pay for over 30 days. Um, if you do have an event, you can archive that and that's stored indefinitely. So if you do have a, an event within 30 days, you say, all right, let's take that segment, we'll archive it and we'll have has access to it. Um, you can infinite scalability. So if you say, hey, you know, we need three more cameras added on, all you're basically doing is paying a license fee. You you enter it into your infrastructure, and boom, you have access to cameras. Um, and again, if, if any of you have questions individually, or, or you know, if you have something you see here, you can certainly just stop me, and I'll, I'll answer what you have. Um, so so looking at the products like this, cameras uh, they have indoor, outdoor, 2K, 4K, HD cameras. Um, a lot of what we're going to choose um, on the exterior are going to be 2K cameras. Um, some of the larger areas we're going to cover with 4K. Um, at the end of this, we have a map of where we plan on placing the cameras. Um, access control, again, we're going to have two viewing stations at each campus. So main office viewing station and principal's office viewing station. Um, this will give everyone, you know, that's allowable access to these things. Um, these can be turned off too. So if principal has a meeting, they don't necessarily want to see what's going on. You know, they can just black out the screen. Um, the environmental sensors were a big necessity for the Hopkins area. Um, not that we don't care about air quality at the elementary school, it's just they're doing an air study there, I believe in the next year or so. 
um, and we will we will review what's needed there at that point. But for now, the high school is more of you know smoking, vaping, um, activities going on in the bathrooms that you know you can't keep with a camera, but with an environmental sensor which captures noise because uh, we have had some damage in the bathroom and obviously it's checking for seven types of chemical reactions in the air, which include vaping, smoking, um, and those types of things. So basically how that would work, it detects a vape, a text gets sent to a designated group of people. Um, obviously we can't see who's in the bathroom, but because there's a camera located nearby, you get a timestamp and say, okay, look, so-and-so came out. Um, you know, we at least question them on what was going on and, you know, whatever happens from there happens from there. Um, the other things, you know, where it says alarms, gas the mailroom, again, we're a smaller campus, we're not gonna use those features, um, but again, they, they can be scaled out. So any questions yet? Not yet. Okay, um, these are the types of cameras we're gonna be using, uh, dome series camera, which cover basically hallways, mini series cover kind of like dead ends, stairwells, things of that nature. Uh, bullet series are, if you're looking for like a long, focus point, like way off in the distance. And the fisheye series are gonna give you a 360 overhead view of what's going on. So like cafeterias, gymnasiums, uh, main entryways are all gonna be the fisheye series. The viewing station is what they're gonna get. So basically you break up your um, access control and your grids that way. So, you know, and, and what one school sees, the other school's not gonna see, you know, HES will get HES view, Hopkins will get Hopkins view, um, you know, and, and if then somebody on an admin level needs Viewing on both, that can be set up as well. Um, and it's basically just your typical grid. If you, you know, for lack of a demo, if you click on a grid, you can enlarge it, you can go back and forth, timestamp. Um, basically, it's like running, you know, a VCR from back in the day, forward, rewind, pause, those types of things. Um, the environmental sensor is really a slick gadget. Again, it can check, um, and it will check uh, indoor air quality. For one, just the quality of the air, um, the granular details of, of what's going on in the air. So the, the PM 2.5 is smoke related. The TVOCs are, you know, like it says, fuel paints, cleaning products, um, things like that. And then, of course, the vape detection and other detectors. Um, it has motion sensing. It has... Um, sound level sensing so you know you set it for 80 db you know if someone crashes into something or whatever you know that that'll trigger an alarm someone will get a text saying hey there was an event happened you know let's let's check what's going on you know you can it allows to get a much better insight onto you know if things are getting broken if things are getting damaged um you know we can say hey we can go in there and find things pretty quickly and, and hopefully pinpoint um what's going on there so the environment sensor are really cool uh, we have six going in hopkins and one going in the greenhouse the one in the greenhouse is basically just for the server room just to keep you know humidity levels air conditioning levels uh sound levels make sure everything in the infrastructure world is staying in tip-top shape um for licensing and we're going to go with a 10-year license basically it means this is going to be a one-time cost so we're buying everything up front um like I said, over here, it shows 365 days local storage. We're not doing that. We're doing 30 based on what all the other institutions, K-12 institutions are doing. Um, with that 10 year, you get next day RMAs, you get uh, free upgrades. Uh, if a camera dies within that 10 year, they just cut you, you know, what'll happen is they'll send you a new camera. If it's a newer model, you'll end up with a newer model. Um, no updated software cost, no updated firmware cost. You have unlimited number of users for this. And again, there's there probably not going to be that many just based on the sensitivity of what the data is going to show. And, you know, for new renewal costs, you just be like, you know, hey, in 10 years, we'll have to look at, you know, Verkata 2.0 or, you know, by then it may be something different. But at least it's going to take care of us for 10 years, kind of in a set it and forget it um, atmosphere. So, you know, again, moving on to other projects, you know, they'll free up that money just like, Hey, it's a little more initially, um, cameras, obviously you guys, I think I've seen the quotes, so they're, they're not exactly cheap, but, um, you know, they are kind of the Cadillac of, of, um, security. So how these all work together again, they basically built this into a one plane platform. So you're going to log into the the Verkata Command Center, you will get all your information in real time. So if you need to see an event that you need to share out with public safety, if there's a medical event, uh, if there's a vape detection, again, all the stuff's gonna come up on the screen in real time. Uh, it'll report, again, you can create reports, you can create alerts, you can create 
um, time zones of when things are going to be monitored. Um, and again, for phase two, uh, we'd be looking at doing um, tying into access control for the buildings, the card swipes, um, and monitoring the opening and closing of doors. Uh, with that, it allows to, you know, if a camera's pointed at a door, a student lets in three people, it'll say, hey, three people entered this door. Um, you know, maybe you want to check that out. If a door has been propped for your set amount of time, as far as, you know, hey, most doors are set for five seconds, 10 seconds. If you cross that threshold, you will get a ping saying, hey, gymnasium door propped open for, you know, past its time limit. And then you can say, you know, click on the camera, see what's going on. If it's a couple of kids bringing in some boxes, you, you can monitor that, or you can just walk down there and say, hey, you know, why is this door open? Um, there's some overrides too. So if you basically have like facilities doors, you can have those armed, but you can also just say, hey, you know, we're, we're doing some maintenance. Let's take this off, off the queue for a moment um, and do that. Panic buttons, principals, front offices can be set up with panic modes. Um, for schools that are in serious lockdown mode uh, and they have, you know, electronic locks on every door, you can just hit that button and all those doors are gonna lock. Um, for us, I don't know that we'll ever get or need to go to that level, um, but at least give you, um, along with panic buttons, you can just send an alarm, you can send out a mass text, you can do all sorts of, of uh, broadcasting with that panic button, and you can program it to do several things, not necessarily panic mode related. Um, and again, the, the goal of this is to tie everything into one thing so we have better access, and better viewing, and better security, and better eyes on what's going on on our campuses. <clears throat> um, this list here is just some of the neighboring schools that are uh, using this product. Um, again, it's it's pretty popular in colleges. Um, a lot of schools, because they are doing more of just, again, they initially started as security cameras. They have since broadened their portfolio to include um, access control and unintended access places and things like that. So, so that's really become a good selling point for them. So um, we're on a tech list or I'm on a tech list for all the mass um, K through 12 schools where all the technology directors and people of that, they can log in and say, hey, you guys have questions. It's a really good resource, um, but we've gotten really good feedback and really good remarks about going with Verkata. Um, this is a very crude map of where we plan on placing cameras. Um, we did do a walkthrough with the vendor a couple of weeks ago. They had come out on site and said, you know, we kind of did it via the map, but you know, without them actually getting eyes on campus, it was difficult for them to see you know, what some of the challenges of the buildings held. So uh, typically this is what we're gonna do. Um, up here on the first floor, we're having three cameras. Uh, these blue icons here designate the vape sensors. So there's gonna be one in each of the public bathrooms. And this number seven way up here is the one that's actually gonna go in the greenhouse. Um, so various levels of cameras. Um, these are 360 degree cameras. cameras. Uh, these are outdoor rated cameras. Um, and again, the goal was to get basically 360 degree field of view around the school and as much coverage inside public areas inside the school, um, you know, looking at doors of, you know, this camera here would cover restrooms here. Uh, this camera here covers restrooms here. Um, this camera here would also cover that. So, you know, they, they get really good, um, probably within 100 to 150 feet of um, recognizable imagery depending on the quality of the camera. So if you get a 4K camera, obviously that can stretch out, you know, and again, there's lots of factors, night, day, um, you know, quality of the room, height of the camera, things like that. But essentially you're looking at at least hundred feet of visibility with these cameras. So this is, this is kind of the layout for um, Hopkins. We have 18 cameras and six sensors. And then have the elementary school is going to get 16 cameras um, and again, more so, uh, April was interested in seeing what was going on more inside the school. Uh, Jen Dowd was interested in more seeing what was going on outside the school. Uh, so again, each school has their individual challenges and requests. Um, and again, you know, not putting vape sensors and environmental sensors in the bathrooms, um, as they are pretty expensive, we, we opted not to do that for the elementary school at this time. You know, if there becomes a need further down, and if the air study that's done later on within the year yields that, you know, we need to have some of that. But again, it's a newer school and, and everything has been good so far. So we'll see, you know, we'll address that when the time comes. Um, 
so so at the elementary school it's basically just cameras at this point so again similar setup entryway cameras uh you know covering bus loading offloading cameras on the corners uh this one here this right down here well this number one camera will actually catch street traffic as well as number two cameras so if there's an event or an accident you know entryway into the school um, we'll have coverage that way uh same thing with the the, the uh, camera here at Hopkins, um, these cameras will also catch traffic out of the street. So that's pretty much the goal. That's pretty much the plan. Um, it's it's a good sized project. It's certainly not a cheap project. And but again, with the hot ticket being, you know, let's let's secure our doors. Let's have eyes on campus. Let's see what's going on. You know, the goal is just make sure that you know we are being safe and secure, and at least doing the best we can to provide you know a sense of security. Um, to all the folks that are part of the district. So, thank you. So, oh, I got it. You're welcome. A question for you about the two, um, the PDF with two quotes. Can you explain the difference between the two? Um, they're based by their quotes. Each one's a school. Okay. So, uh, I think quote number two in that list is um, the first one's Hopkins Academy. The okay, second, yes, thank you. Yes, yeah. Okay, very good, thank you. Yeah. Um, questions from other members of the team? So Steve, thanks for the presentation. When you say this, oh, is, this is the higher end and clearly there's others that have adopted it. Um, so we're getting quality, we're getting good service over 10 years. Um, you have a sense if we went with a, a cheaper version, how much we would save? Uh, problem with going with cheaper versions is you end up in a, in a not a lot of them only go out five years so you're going to be five years out and then you're going to be presented with the same problems um which you know isn't necessarily a bad thing either uh there's there's two schools of thought of just saying hey you know we can we can either dump this after five years saying you know we're not happy with the product at all um so you know 10 years is a long time to commit um, but again, it's, it's basically a committal of, we kind of own everything at that point. So, you know, if five years down the road, we don't like it, um, again, we're, we're not talking millions of dollars. I mean, it's, we're not talking no dollars either. Right. Um, but you know, say in five years, we're not happy with the product, you know, we can start migrating somewhere else based on, you know, income need, uh, where the district's at financially, things like that, you know, um, but it, you know, that is a good question of looking at other vendors. Um, I really haven't found much uh in the way of you know they're more local vendors um using kind of a uh nationally based product so you really don't get the expertise you get more of a local like hey we've used it before um at least you know in the initial findings of, of trying to find a vendor um who knew their products well and, and could support them so you know with installation it's it's a different um ball game because like well here's what we install and here's what we like but we're not the actual company that manufactures them um and and Vercata is kind of the opposite we manufacture the products we sell the product but we don't install the product um you know but they have a series of of nationwide um pre-approved contractors that are uh Vercata vetted and they will um you know follow their specs on installations um, so yeah I can uh, again. So I haven't really found a good vendor outside of these folks that will do um, the scalability like they will and give us that single pane of glass of information of, of looking at everything that's going on in an instant rather than like, you know, we have one company, well, we got to go here for the cameras. All right, now we have door sensors. So now we got to call these people and deal with these people for door sensors. So, you know, from a, a support standpoint, you know, if we can get one point of contact for all our issues, uh, it, it makes streamlining and getting things working, or if there's an issue, a lot easier on my end rather than trying to call seven different people for, you know, what may or may not be a problem. Sure. There's also been some degree of vetting that's happened at the state level. Um, Chris could certainly comment with more authority on this, but they are part of the state approved vendor list. So the aspect of 30B is taken care of. And in order for them to be on a pre-approved vendor list, they would have had to go through some degree of vetting on, um, in order to, to be selected for that. 
Thank you, Annie. Steve, question for you about the uh, 11th year. We own all the equipment. It's already set up and wired. We wouldn't have necessarily the rapid support. And uh, wh what would we lose at that time if we didn't sign up for another period of time? Um, the 11th year, we would not end up. Well, again, I mean, it's it's. I think at that point you'd be looking at replacing hardware anyways. Um, you know, 10 years out in, in hardware world is, is or electronics world, you know, like your TV, it's 10 years old. It's like, you don't fix it, you throw it away, right? Um, it's kind of the same thing with cameras. You know, again, 10 years out, uh, who knows what cameras are gonna look like, what they're gonna be capable of doing, um, how they're gonna connect, uh, those types of things. So, you know, 10 years out, we, we re, you know, obviously not 10 years out, eight years out, we start looking at, you know, hey, are we gonna renew this? Um, you know, these cameras are working fine, they're indoors. We don't have to touch them. We just have to renew licensing. Um, and again, licensing is, is cheaper than actually buying the hardware. Uh, you know, there's a hardware cost, there's a license cost. So, so that's something to look at, you know, on that 10-year plan and saying, hey, you know, we're going to keep, because again, if you have a 2K camera inside and it's basically looking down a hallway, you know, that thing should last you 20 years. Um, again, these, these are quality made products. Um, again, if you, if you ever get one in your hand, they're just solid. They're robust. They're, they're made to last. Um, and again, if they don't, they swap you out when you get one the next day. So, um, and from a, a bandwidth standpoint, they do all their recording locally on the camera. So how we have our network set up is these cameras will be on a UPS enabled switch. So the UPS is just battery backup uh, for an extended amount of time. So if we do lose power to the building, um, the switches will stay up, the cameras will stay up. So they'll continue to record even though there's no power in the building, uh, but there is power to those cameras. Um, you won't be able to log in and see what's going on, but they'll still be recording um, as they would. So uh, you know, that's one of the benefits of using them. Um, another benefit is, is the way they do this, you know, the traffic on our network is, is very minimal. Um, it's actually less than phone traffic. So, you know, again, the only time it really uses traffic is when you log in and, and start, you know, reviewing footage and things like that, which, you know, again, is, is hit or miss depending on, on the event. So, uh, but yeah, to get back to that question, 10 years down the road, uh, you know, probably about five years, you, you do a review of how things are working out. Um, again, you do this yearly, but, you know, at the five-year mark, you say, hey, you know, are we looking for new vendors? Eight years out, you say, all right, you know, well, are we happy? You know, what's our plan? We got to get new quotes. We got to replace five cameras. We got to replace 10 cameras. You get that account information. Um, and again, you go back and say, hey, you know, we're going to stay with you guys. Uh, we're happy with the performance. We're happy with the product. Um, and again, you know, five years out, because again, it's, it's not a contract we're signing per se. So if something were to happen, um, you're just out the five years of licensing if, if you decided not to um, continue on any years down the road. So um, there's that, there's that aspect. And again, 10 years is a long, a long road. Um, but I, you know, I feel strongly enough in the product and, and they stand behind their product that I think it's, uh, I think it's safe to, to go that route. But again, 10 years, you review it um, a few years prior to and say, look, you know, where are we going next? Great. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, thoughts or questions for Stephen? Do we have a sense of how much installation will cost? Uh, unfortunately, yes. Um, no, we actually, we actually, uh, are meeting up with a vendor shortly to, to discuss installation costs, um, prevailing wage kind of hurts, uh, coming out of the higher ed environment where, you know, we could just get vendors as needed. Um, K through 12, I find a bit cumbersome as far as all that contract work. You now, thankfully Chris is here to, to hold my hand through it all because some of it, I'm just, it, it baffles me. <laughs> Uh, the complexity of it, but you know, we 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 do what we got to do. Um, but yeah, prevailing wage for this is it's going to be pricey. Um, I would say HES because it's a newer school and it's more wide open. There's there's less walls and stuff to core and, and drill through. That HES will be the cheaper of the schools. Um, Hopkins going to be the challenge uh, because of the low doorways, the low hallways, mm -hmm. uh, and getting things out to those those corner cameras. So. I don't even want to put a, a price on it because um, I, I, you know, I don't really know what they're going to, I mean, I, I kind of have a construction background and I can guesstimate and say, you know, it'll be 60 grand uh, if it comes back at hundred, you know, I don't want to be like, well, you quoted us 60. So, 
you know, I, I'm not really comfortable in giving an actual figure, um, but I, I know it's not going to be, you know, cheap, for lack of a better term. Okay. Annie, how are we going to pay for it? I'm asking in the action item that the school committee, if they would like to approve this security measure, that they would also approve that we would use school choice for that. You do have a copy of your revolving account um, uh, updates, and we can talk about uh, school choice and school choice balances. Um, and then we would bring back to this school committee when we do the final authorization at the end of the year for how much we need out of school choice. Um, you'd vote that amount. But right now, because we don't have the installation cost, I'm asking for if uh, you see fit to, to approve this security upgrade that you would also approve using school choice funds as needed. Annie, does it make sense to wait to see what the installation costs are going to be in order to get a total project cost um, that we can review and then approve? So the quote is good for um, the quote. You see there are discounts on the quote. So the quote um, is essentially good until right after this meeting, until um, tomorrow. Um, and I think that uh, in terms of installation, I guess at the end of the day, um, the decision that we need to make is, is that the installation, yes, it will be prevailing wage, but we'll also on the installation in accordance with 30B, go out to bed and get the lowest responsive and responsible who can do the work. Um, and I, I don't know that, um, yeah, I don't, I don't, my recommendation is that if, if the school committee feels that this is a useful security upgrade to make that we proceed with the purchase of the security upgrade and, and then know that we, but we can, we can also know that the price of this product will increase. Um, may or may not increase. That's true. That's yeah. true. I mean, in fact, no, it's entirely up to you. The created date on the quote is October 28th, and the expiration date is also October 28th. So it appears that uh, we had very little window to approve this. That's supposed to be 1128. I think that's a mistake there. Chris, actually, I don't know, Chris, if you can hear us, he was working with the folks on this quote. So it may not be, but. Yeah, um, I'm sorry, here I am. So. First of all, we, we were signing it originally on October 28th um, in dealing with the, the bid cooperative that we were working with on this. Um, it ended up, <laughs> it was quite a lot of fun actually to work with these guys. They were very, very uh, nitpicky with how they wanted the quotes exactly. Um, and so finally at about 5.30, I was working with people in California, so it was earlier in the day for them, but about 5.30 on Friday night, I, I pulled the plug and said, guys, we're not signing this until Monday, and uh, which is October 31st. So even though the quotes are dated um, the 28th, which was the Friday, they're, they're not actually signed until the 31st. So I think we have until December, probably either November 30th or December 1st, um, whatever 30 days is. Although it I mean, it's just technically speaking, the document says expiration on October 28th. So we're going to have to get a new quote anyways. Is that right? Is this quote? I think the emails that Chris exchanged would take care of the fact of when the actual signing took place. Am I correct there, Chris, that the, the fact that the quote itself, do you have email documentation indicating that the quote is good for 30 days from signing? Uh, you're on mute. Sorry, I was hoping you could read my lips. Um, yeah, that, that's correct. I'm sorry, I was trying to pull up the uh, the copy of it that I have as well, just to see if um, if I have the signed versions here. Uh, let's see. While you're looking that up, any other comments from other school committee members on uh, 
moving on securing technology without knowing how much it'll cost to uh, you know, install or whether we should wait and look at the whole picture thoughts? I mean, we're going to have to install it in some fashion. Somebody's going to have to install it. So whether it's a, a quote from a different uh, vendor who does the installation locally and uses off-the-shelf products. Um, I mean, I'm, I'll, I'll defer to you, Steve. That sounds like you've done your homework. Other schools are invested in this. Um, I, I'm a believer of paying for quality, and especially in something that is important in this. I like the idea that it's all consolidated in one. I think that'll make it more effective, that single pane of glass idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Paul, it's, it's again, with, with the crew that we potentially are going to have doing the installations, you know, that they're, they're recommended um, in a Fricata certified installer. Um, and again, I mean, prevailing wage is prevailing wage, right? You're going to pay that to right. Johnny next door, you know, the local the electrician down the street or, or these right. guys. So my hope is that because they've done this for as many years as Fricata has been in business for them, that, you know, they, they do know how to get the product up and mounted and yeah. uh, in, in working in a timely fashion rather than, you know, the local guy who may be cheaper, but you know, again, it all comes down to billable hours. So, you know, if it's a quote, then you say, hey, you know, great. But obviously, you know, we have these issues going down the road where Ricotta saying, hey, the cameras weren't installed correctly. You didn't use a certified installer. Um, we have these problems. So, you know, we, we can only help you with this portion of it where, you know, again, with the whole thing kind of being and hopefully being integrated and seamless, you know, again, if we have that vendor that has worked with the other vendor, and their partners then you know say hey you know there's there's a lot less finger pointing that'll happen between them two you know they'll just say hey fix it you know we want this thing working and at the end of the day you know i i think having that uh brings value to just you know getting uh the local guy to to hang these things up i definitely don't think we should um uh, skimp when it comes to installation if we're buying the cadillac of cameras the the key question is sort of what does the what is the cost of the Verkata you know uh, proved installer um, so that we understand what the total project cost is that that's my only concern but if you think it's comparable to what a regular electrician would cost more or less um, then we could use that as a guide. I mean, it would. Um, I actually did bring an electrician in. He wanted the statement of work, which, again, I wasn't going to do because we weren't sure the direction we were going and if we were going to get approval. So rather than doing all the late work beforehand, you know, like, let's get the approval and then bring in the people to to gauge the amount of work ahead of them. So, um, again, it being the Cadillac, you know, I think the Cadillac reference is, is good um, and it's affordable for us because we are doing, you know, a smaller version of this. Typically the jobs they do are, are 50, 60, 100 cameras spread across, you know, each building uh, with eight buildings. So, you know, they're doing hundreds of cameras, hundreds of locations um, in these bigger districts and it becomes really pricey then. Um, I, I think that's kind of the joy of us being smaller is that, you know, we, we, we have a fair amount of cameras, but we're not over the top with them. So we're not spending all these money on cameras we don't need, or we have seven locations that, you know, like, hey, you know, it was good at 100 grand, but, you know, now at 400 grand just for cameras, it's like, well, you know, pump the brakes. Let's let's go down the Walmart and just get the cameras off the shelf because that's what's affordable. So, um, you know, money is, you know, again, they're not cheap, um, but they do they do have excellent value um, and they do have uh, very easy user interface. I mean, it's just the ability to get things done in this thing. And if you need to spec out a. Um, an incident, you just, you know, click that camera, go through the timeline, uh, highlight two things with your click, um, click archive, and, and that thing's saved. Um, and then for that point, you can email it, save it, and do whatever you need to do with it. So um, a lot comes with that price of just ease of use, um, set it, forget it. You know, you're covered for 10 years, nine years out, a camera, one of your outside cameras gets struck by lightning or uh, it gets rain, you know, inside it gets damp, it gets damaged, they're sending you a new one. So, I mean, that's the joy of, of a 10-year lease is, is, well, it's not a lease, but 10-year ownership with 10-year warranty is that, you know, you, you're not going to find that on other makers, other manufacturers' products as well. So, 
I have a quick comment and then I'll turn it over to you, Chris, I see your hand. Uh, Annie, I think what I'd want to see happen uh, as we you know, approach our five-year timeline and certainly as we go through you know, years one through five that we're tracking the, um, the sort of like the, the utility of the tools, um, what kinds of benefits have come from the use of it from a safety standpoint, uh, as well as just general improvement in education uh, standpoint. I think that's gonna be really important to determining whether to continue to invest further down the line and also to defend uh, such a sizable expense. Chris. I just wanted to mention a couple of things. Um, <clears throat> the first being, um, with the cameras, we had added one a couple of years ago at HES, um, <clears throat> excuse me, just because the camera they had wasn't giving any kind of a picture that they could actually recognize who was at the door when, when you ring the doorbell. Um, if I remember correctly, that was around $2,500. Um, that was for one. And it was a, um, I think it was a standard deaf camera because that's all we have, I think, at this point in time. Um, so you know, I mean, there, there are certain economies of scale, obviously, when you buy 40 or 50 cameras like this, you know, the installation is going to be a little bit cheaper per camera because they're doing a bunch of them in a day versus just one. But, you know, it just gives you some kind of guidance as to, well, this is what we were paying for one camera a couple of years ago. I'm sure, you know, that same camera has gone up in price now. Um, and the other thing was just, um, you know, with the, uh, with the install, you know, Steve mentioned prevailing wage, and that is correct. Whether we bring in, say, our own electrician or, or, or anyone, every time we bring in a vendor, you know, they have to be, we go out for a prevailing wage rate and we have to follow that. So any vendor that we go out to bid for will follow the same uh, prevailing wage rate, regardless of who it is. So um, just, just a little heads up for you guys, that's all, to, to kind of let you know how it works. Um, Good point. Good point. Thank you. Yep. Christine. I was just curious about, so again, what is the timeline on this that we're looking at? When, or when For installation or for, well, again, it, it hinges on approval of the project uh, and then basically hinges on the availability of, of vendors to come out, quote the installation costs. Um, getting the product isn't, isn't a challenge at all. You know, they, they have, they have, they've taken measures pre-COVID to make sure that they have stock um, and they have guaranteed stock of every camera we need, every mount we need. Um, so, so availability of the product is not an issue. Um, right now, it's just finding a vendor that is capable of doing the work um, that is hopefully Vercata certified and uh, has availability of, you know, again, uh, my timeline is, is sooner the better, um, you know, based on, based on approvals. So ideally, um, I think in initial discussions with vendors, you know, we're looking at probably a, a Christmas break kind of start time for this. Um, you know, again, we don't, uh, coming from higher ed where projects, you know, have to be done yesterday, uh, the, the, the scalability here or, or the, the logistics in, in K through 12, um, you know, I, I tend to run faster than, than the, uh, the projects do so you know which is fine um i'm figuring that out too as i as i tread my way through here so um but for me you know any project i can i can get off the ground and get going sooner um you know again you you, you end up buying the product uh i think they give you about a 30-day window um we can we can get an extension on the licensing options so if we you know if we get approval uh, they can give us up to 90 days deferral on the licensing start time. So basically we get all the hardware. Um, licensing would be, def the, would be deferred 90 days, uh, meaning, you know, 90 days from the time of purchase, we would have to get these things installed and working. Um, and I, I think that timeline fits okay with vendors that I've spoken with about getting on site and getting the job started. Um, so once everything's been started, you you call the company back, say, hey, everything's up and running. You can activate those licenses, um, or as cameras are installed, you activate those licenses, and then hopefully within that ninety day window, you are now um, 
have all your licenses activated and the countdown starts from 10 years from from that point not 10 years from when you actually sign on the dotted line so there is a deferral on on getting installation done prior to you know our, our count getting kicked so we're looking at basically anywhere from a hundred and what say a hundred and fifty to a hundred and seventy. I mean, what are we talking here? Maybe less. Talking total project cost. Yeah. Um, again, I, I wasn't really comfortable with giving just a, a shouting out an estimate because. Um, you know, I, I don't install these for a living. I, you know, I, I have done enough of this work and I have my own timeline of things, but you know, what my the high end, is. what do you think high end is? I don't want to say yes. And then all of a sudden we're back, you know, we yeah. find out that it's going to cost double the amount that we expected. So, you know, no, I, the high end would be good. I would think I would guesstimate that the installation costs would not exceed the cost of the cameras. So 150, approximately. Yeah. Okay. And I, and I think that's being on the high side. Um, again, just initial conversations. Um, HES school is going to go quick. You know, everything's kind of wide open. Um, speaking with the principals, they, they did say that, you know, they would allow installations to happen during school hours if, you know, if the vendor is on such a schedule that we have to start, you know, um, not during a break or something like that, you know, they would allow work to be done um, during during working hours, you know, with the exception of, you know, drilling and things would be kept to a minimum or during bell times, things like that. So uh, the principals were eager to, to get this going as well um, and are willing to work around schedules of installers to make this happen. And again, we don't want to, you know, have X amount of dollars sitting in boxes for months on end because um, at a point you start paying those licensing costs. Very good. Well. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Oh, so team, let's deliberate on um, on this project. Um, any um, one want to begin with their thoughts uh, and comments? Yeah. Can I just throw something out there? I, I just, maybe I'm really overthinking this and you guys can stop me if I am, but um, given all of the work that's going to be hope you know in terms of our capital improvement plan if if anything if any of these things have to be moved or adjusted or any of them are i'm just thinking kind of like scenarios in which cameras have to be moved or adjusted or they break because of other work that's going on is that stuff that's going to be covered is that stuff that we have to think about in terms of where we're going to put cameras um i'm just thinking you know there's locker rooms that are going to be redone i just i'm just trying to think outside the box here well, Ethan, we, we won't have cameras in locker rooms. Um, we will have well, sensors. No. Right, right. So the sensors mean, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, no, and, and sensors are basically wireless. Uh, they have 10-year batteries, lithium batteries in them. So, you know, they're basically a set it and forget it kind of thing as well. Um, as far as as far as cameras, interior cameras, those those can be moved by myself. Um, I, okay. I have a skill set where, you know, basically they're ceiling grid mounted, wall mounted, uh, things of that nature. Um, pretty much the challenge for anything interior right now is just getting a wire to that location. Mm -hmm. uh, either Cat 6E, you know, some sort of power over ethernet wire to those locations. So um, running basic cables, I mean, that's, that's you know, people have been doing that for a hundred years now. Um, so, so getting wire and power, it's, it's all in the same wire to these locations is, is kind of the easy part. Uh, the interior mounting is, is kind of the easy part. Obviously it's more challenging in the gymnasiums, the cafeterias where you have the high ceilings um, and you know, don't necessarily have uh, attic space or crawl space. Uh, so surface mounting on some of these things is, is where the time is gonna start getting eaten up uh, once you start putting things in Romex and things like that. And obviously it has to be steel tubing so students can't come along, cut a wire, things like that. So uh, exterior of the school, um, I don't really know the plan. So I don't know if, if things are getting added on to the school. I, you know, I don't think so, but um, exterior moves. I mean, basically it's, it's a four bolt wall mount screwed into brick. Um, again, more of the work is getting the actual wire to those locations. Um, you know, so the corners of the school, you basically got to go through a foot of concrete and brick or either come out attic or come out door spaces. So, so that's, you know, 
that's where the majority of the time is going to be spent is getting to those far, you know, those last miles as we call them. Um, but I don't think, you know, in the trying to just think ahead to the scheme of what's going to be upgraded, I, I don't foresee many cameras having to be moved. Um, and if they are, you know, again, if they're interior and they're ceiling mounted, you know, we can do that in house. Um, and again, if it's, if it's something exterior, then, you know, we can use the local guy to say, Hey, we just need this mount moved. Um, and, and if it's not high enough off the ground, then, then I can tackle those two. So. Have, thank you. you have you You're spoken welcome. to any of the other schools? <clears throat> yes. So, and what are they? Um, they're there again, because they are expensive and a lot of schools are bigger. Um, I have my colleague about town really want to go with Fricata, but the cost to do seven buildings and the superintendent's office was extremely pricey. Um, so, so they opted to go with a more of a homegrown solution, which he groaned about because he, again, he wants simplicity, you know, as, as again, being the one guy who runs IT here, uh, you know, I don't want something that's constantly breaking down saying, hey, you know, camera number three is out or camera eight is out. Um, you know, we just we just want things to work, you know, ideally in life, that's all we want, right? Right now, I mean, have you spoken to any who have this, such as Mahar? Mahar is uh, about the same building Mahar, wide. Mahar is basically just a reseller for Verkata. Um, so Monarch, I mean, you can basically just forget them. Uh, there, there's kind of like the I'm middle. Sorry, part. Steve, the school district. She's talking about the school, school district. Monarch yeah. yeah. School district has um, the system as a customer. Oh, Monarch does? Monarch. Well, that's what it says. Oh, Monarch. Oh, no, I, I haven't reached out to them exactly. But again, I, I have used this product in higher ed. Um, I have spoken to some of the other districts via email on, you know, basically it's a, it's, it's a listserv, so people just ask questions and people give comments. So I haven't had direct conversations with an actual district using it. Um, I mean, I, I can certainly reach out and get some some more feedback, but from the the limited use I have in higher ed, and from the feedback I've gotten on the listserv, you know, everyone is like, you know, hey, if you can get them and if you can afford them, then then that's the way to go. I'll say I'm, I, I'm comfortable committing now. I mean, I think the installation costs will essentially be, we'll, we'll pay the same rate, the hours might change. Uh, so that to me is essentially a wash between products. And if, Steve, it sounds like you've done your homework. I can see the compelling argument to have the good good products for our two schools, right? And because, yeah, I mean, again, for, for me, Paul, it's it's, I want to do, and again, it was the same in higher ed, you know, if, if we're putting something forward to the customer, which in this case is our students, you know, and, and not so much security. I mean, that's, that's more of just for everyone, but I, I like to put out the best product I can, whether it's a projector, whether it's a security camera, you know, and if it's affordable, which, you know, I, I, I think it is. Um, and again, I think we're fortunate that we're small enough that we can afford the better products, not necessarily have to scale back because we have too many buildings. We're too big of a district. So, you know, I think that actually worked in our favor for this. And again, the discounting that they were able to provide us was, was really super, super deep as well. So, um, you know, I, all things considered, I, I think, you know, it's kind of a, a win for us. And again, looking at installation is, you know, obviously that's like you said, we're going to pay it no matter what product we stick on the end of that wire. Right. So right. might as well put in something good. That's going to, yeah, it'll work out for us. I really appreciate um, how you, you you boil down that we, we don't have a lot of people to oversee mm -hmm. and uh, and and take uh, you know, sort of upkeep the system. It makes a lot of sense to have something that does not break down as much and that is supported with a warranty that is um, you know extremely rapid and high quality. Um, so I do appreciate that. I, I do too. I mean, it's, it's part of, you know, there, there's so much to do on a daily basis for, for everyone. I mean, you know, anyone that does any sort of multitasking in their jobs, you know, if you get one more task that, you know, suddenly, Hey, I can get a camera replaced. It's going to take me 10 minutes to send an email with an issue. Next day I'll have a camera, you know, whether I can swap it out myself. Great. If not, then, you know, we, we pay the guy an hour to come out, set up a ladder and swap it out. It's a done deal. Now, if I call another vendor and say, Hey, you know, 
we're going to spend four hours troubleshooting this because you know we don't know who installed it we don't know what the wire is like uh you know a lot of unknowns there so um again at the end of the day time is money uh projects are projects you know th there's there's no shortage of them here in hadley which is you know kind of a good thing <laughs> and and we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna add more to this um from an it side of things so you know you'll you'll see me again asking for more things to do um, but for right now you know let's get these cameras figured out what we want to do and 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 go forward great uh ethan any um final thoughts on this? no i think all of the questions that i had have been answered and and i i think i'm i'm kind of with paul i'm, I'm comfortable moving forward with this today and um you know given the fact that the the work that's going to be done has to go out to bid and we're going to take the lowest bidder like that that money is going to be locked in at that rate and so um and i trust steve in this if, if this is the pro product that he feels most comfortable and that's going to keep our kids safe let's do it okay christine i i know that christine was having to address a couple of things in her house so she okay. may have step away to do that for just a moment okay um hi i'm back i'm sorry i apologize having a sundowners moment okay. not me, not me. <laughs> uh no i i i guess i'm i i know i agree with the value um I guess I'm just a little leery of the, you know, the rush and the discount and, you know, um, not being able to get a better grip on costs prior to uh, voting. That's, I guess that's just, you know, looking at worst case scenario and then, yeah, so, but. I have that same concern when I first started asking questions about this. And I know that it is also a very competitive marketplace. So when we put it out to bid, we will probably get our, you know, our, the best possible bid amongst uh, certified vendors. So I, I take solace in, in our rigorous process. Uh, and that gives me enough comfort to, you know, move on a product that we want to move on that's at a great discount and maybe come in at around the holiday time, which would be ideal is if our students aren't in the building for 12 or so days and we're able to get this installed, you know, we, we've got a good month or so to get our, our bidding process together. And um, so it's, it's, it seems, I, I like the idea of moving forward expeditiously if this is the system we want to select because the bidding process is going to help us get our best electrical bid is what I'm thinking. And is that, but there's no guarantee that there's, we're going to have people available to do it. Yes, there are no guarantees in life. Well, I mean, there, I mean, it will get done, you know, it's just a matter of, of timelines, obviously, you know, the, the, the group, that is the Vercata certified, they are pretty much on board with a December kind of time frame. Um, you know, without anything being concrete and written in stone yet, you know, they said they're typically right now two to three weeks out from starting. And again, they, they don't really classify our job as a big job. Um, you know, for us it is because you know it's 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 good size, but you know, like I said, if they're doing 10 buildings in a district or 20 buildings, um, like Worcester schools, for example, my, my friend just worked there, they have 57 buildings. Um, so, you know, by, by way of comparison, you know, we have three, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's pretty easy. So, so scalability, um, you know, they look at us and say, you know, this is, this is a pretty simple job, um, aside from the actual getting that last mile wire out there. So, uh, but they did state that they're, you know, from signing, uh, two to three weeks out from from that point. Thank you, Stephen. Um, any final comments on deliberation before we take a vote on this? Christine, Ethan, Paul. Just thinking, Christine, what would help address your concerns? Do you think? 
Then in another quote or? I, I guess that's for me that, that you know, um, only seeing one quote makes it harder for me to sure. grasp whether or not this is a good deal, whether or not, uh, you know, this is actually my brother-in-law's area of expertise. Um, and he does this for a living. Um, so, you know, I don't know. I guess, I guess I would have to see more about whether or not there, this is a good deal, but that's just me. I'm, you know, um, you're telling me that this is a good deal for a camera, but I don't know what it's in comparison to. So that's just, I, I guess that's just me being sort of more of a visual kind. I need to see, you know, um, things to compare it to. That's all. I think Chris alluded to the fact that, you know, he did do that camera for standard quality back X amount of years ago, and it was essentially $2,500 for that camera. And that's for one. Um, we're paying, I don't have the quote open up in front of me, but, you know, cameras range from $1,200 to $2,400, I believe. Um, and I think the the environmental sensors are, are probably the priciest options at close to, I believe, $3,000 for those. So um, I, I don't think you're finding a commercial grade camera with warranty for that price um, anywhere in the market. Um, you, you will get cheaper cameras, but you know, you're gonna get a year warranty, a three year, if you're lucky warranty. Um, you know, so again, paying what you classify as more per camera, it also comes with more. Um, it, it's like anything nowadays, you get what you pay for. Um, and if we were able to get 10 years without paying too much more than what we pay for a five-year camera, um, and again, being from a support standpoint, you know, simple call, simple replacement, simple ease of use. Um, that's, that's how I approaching it. Um, and again, you know, you guys approach it differently. Um, and again, I, I, I tried to factor in the needs of the schools, the needs of the principals, um, Oh no, I'm not, I'm not questioning that. Yeah, no, I, I get that. I, too. I, what, my can my own for my own thought processes i usually like to see something to compare it to yeah, so yeah. you know i have at least something there to give me a basis that's all but again it's it's similar to you know having used this product in the past you kind of go with what you like anyways um you know from a standpoint so if, you know if you're a gm person you tend to buy gm cars if you're a ford person you buy ford cars um, you know, if it's a particular dealer you like, you're going to go back to that dealer, right? So it's kind of the same way as far as, you know, people that in this industry, they, they like, they stay with what they know. And, and that's sometimes, you know, that, that's good sometimes, sometimes it's not, but, you know, I, I'm 100% confident in, in this decision that, you know, it's going to serve us well for the full 10 years. I'm comfortable with moving forward uh, tonight based on your uh, assessment of the technology and um, what you described to be a reputable vendor and a set of products um, that will be supported for 10 years. So I, I would be in favor of uh, moving forward um, tonight. Um, do we want to entertain a vote? Sure. Um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm compelled by the, the 10 year agreement. I think that I can see the value of that, Steve, that relationship, the warranty for the equipment, if it breaks down. Um, so can, yeah. Can, can I jump in? An Annie, I guess we haven't heard from you much on this. Do you have anything you wanna share before we take this to a vote? Obviously we've talked a little bit about this, but. Yeah, well, just one of the things, Christine, I think you raised some really good questions. The the company, the the list that they're on, the contract list, PEPM. So in order for any bidder or contract to get on that list, they have to first submit a sealed beer, bid. They have to meet really stringent requirements there. And the cooperative does that legwork. That is not to say, I'm in, I'm in no way suggesting um, 
that your suggestion is an excellent one, but I, I want to respond to, in a way, PEPM, the cooperative purchasing agent, kind of does that evaluation, and then you don't get to be a part of the cooperative. And this is for governmental entities and primarily for public school districts um, and educational organizations that are that have to comply with bidding laws. Mm -hmm. um, then we can go on and a great deal of that vetting has been done. It's kind of like the state bid list. So the okay. vendor had to meet those. I just mm -hmm. wanted to, sometimes that's not, it's not information. And it's good that you ask this even for the general public to understand that this vendor is on a, a has been vetted by a purchasing cooperative, okay. had to go through that process meet all their requirements, submit a sealed bid, and then we're allowed to choose from there, just like state bid list. Mm -hmm. So it's like the governmental entity did that vetting on our behalf. Just mm -hmm. wanted to clarify that. Okay. Thank you. So okay. our- Do we need a motion to- Right, motion to vote. Yes, we motion and second. So I think Paul made a motion. So I think there's a oh. motion. And I interrupted the motion. I don't know what how that works. Sorry, Humara. <laughs> I did I did by asking a question. Oh, that was a good question. Good good question, Ethan. Thanks. Yes. Yes. Thank you, Paul, for the motion. Do I hear a second? Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you so much and really appreciate you helping us understand oh. Stephen, Chris, Annie, um, all, all that this is. Uh, this entails. Um, I think it was a necessary, necessary conversation, and I really appreciate you engaging with us on it. Yeah, thank you. Hi, I thank you for listening. Um, so it's a big decision, and and one you know not to take lightly. But again, you know, we it's it's bringing us up to par with our sister. You know, our equal institutions uh, puts us ahead of others. Um, not that it's a contest, but it's always nice to have nice products. So, yeah. And again, you know, the support, the ease of use, things like that. That's that's been strong selling points for for this. Steve, I, I have a quick question. Is there a camera in the courtyard? <clears throat> um, no. At uh, Hopkins? Yeah. No. Do you do you think there should be one? <laughs> <laughs> What's going on in the courtyard? Well, that's usually where the seniors and juniors hang out. So I'm just, you know, that was just. No, I, I, again, I mean, we, we've done the walkthrough and, you know, we, we sat with the principals to get, you know, eyes on, for them, it was more stairwells, uh, exterior buildings, um, things of that nature. Uh, but no, no one's actually, that's, that's a, that's a darn good uh, question um, and maybe something that we should look at. Um, and again, for scalability on these things, you know, if we decide six months, a year down the road, like, hey, you know, we really have a blind spot here. We really need a camera here. Uh, you, you just basically buy a camera with a 10 year license or, you know, they prorate it and you, you plug it in and it's boom, shows up in your system, says, all right, I'm ready to go. But yeah, that's, I'm going to write that down as, as a potential spot to, to look at. That's a, a great catch. Christine, it sounds like you might know where all the spots are. I know. It, yeah. My, my boys, have, as they've gotten further away from high school, they've been telling a lot more tales of things I didn't know. It's not pretty. <laughs> Maybe I should have a call with them. <laughs> there you go. See? Yeah, yeah. It, it'd be a good resource. Yes. No, that, that was that was a great, a great uh acknowledgement of, of a potential need there. So um on the next walkthrough, we will we will look at that. Great. Yeah, Thanks. I apologize. I got I have to leave. I'm already a bit late, but sorry. I'm, thank you, Paul. Um, see y'all. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. Bye, Paul. And thank you, Stephen, for this presentation. Um, oh, yeah. It, it, it probably went on way longer than we expected it. But um, no, it, it's good information. Again, it's, it's an important decision. Um, and I'm glad you guys you know, were able to get the answers you needed and the clarity that you needed on, on moving this forward. So Terrific. We look forward to thank hearing you. about Expeditious Installation. Thanks so much. We will follow up. All right. Terrific. OK, moving on to item 4C. We are discussing the first reading of the proposed uh, SRO School Resource Officer Memorandum of Understanding. Um, so over to the Policy Subcommittee for discussion. All right, I am 
just pull up my I just pulled up the proposed one. So essentially the the new agreement um, or proposal, I should say, um, is much more in depth and has a lot more detail about what the uh, SRO, what their position is, what their position is not. It clearly states that this is not to be used as any type of, you know, discipline, that this is about community building, about relationship building. Um, uh, just trying to get over to the other side. If you take a look at um, the old agreement, this is much more in depth. And I, I, I think it's very well laid out. And I think that um, it covers everything we need. Um, I don't know, does anybody have any concerns about it? And I was just going to add that this is we. I mean, basically, this new memorandum. If, and again, stop me if I'm wrong. Is is a lot of the legwork was through uh, the police officers, kind of taking what they've gotten from uh, the state police and and all of that, and, and kind of inputting that into this. Correct. It's yeah. It was in direct response to the police reform bill. Mm -hmm. The police yep. reform bill is about a lot more than school resource officers, but as part of the police reform bill. Um, things like what Christine pointed out, and that's great context, um, Ethan, but like what Christine pointed out, being very explicit in MOUs between police and schools, that a school resource officer is not a disciplinarian, is not a de facto assistant principal in a school. Right. It lays out very explicitly the kinds of training that we expect SROs to have, um, training in cultural proficiency, training in nonviolent response, training in de-escalation and positive behavioral interventions and supports. So you are correct, this is all stems from the police reform bill and then the Mass Association of School Superintendents, their legal counsel, the legal counsel for the school committee also looked at the proposed and recommended um, adopting the proposed MOU because it does align with the expectations in that police reform bill. Right. And it, I'm assuming, so, and again, we talked about this earlier, that this is in fact for, you know, been sort of written up and put out to all school systems um, to have the same language and to know that this is through the state. This is not just with uh, just Hadley. Right. That this covers yeah. so, yeah. Correct. all so possible the, situations yeah. uh, so that you know, and again, the training, I, I can tell you just from, you know, um, everything that we spoke to um, Officer Romano about and uh, what I've learned on my own from someone who's been through it is the training for the SROs is really intense and they learn a lot. And it's, um, I think it's a, it's a program that's gonna work out very well. And they're continuously learning. Um, they, they're going to be asked to do essentially the same as what, you know, teachers do as PDPs. They're going to continuously be training so that it's, this is not something that um, people are going to look at and just think it's, it's a security guard. Terrific. Well, it, reviewing this document, I can tell you that it is a night and day difference from what we were originally looking at um, six months or so ago. I commend the state um, and the uh, Massachusetts Association of Superintendents for going in this direction. It really is very comprehensive. I appreciate the, um, the level of detail in describing what a school resource officer does and how they're trained and also what they don't do and how there is a 
um, clear demarcation between the, the schools and the police, even though there is this uh, human resource, a school, uh, a police human resource professional that is over on the school side. So I really did appreciate the thoroughness. Um, so we are looking at this for first reading, mm -hmm. which means that we will come back and vote on it in December. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, thank you for bringing it to us. Okay. Thank you. Um, moving on to the next item of the agenda, we are reviewing the safe school and DEI support specialist role. Annie. Yes, I'm requesting this evening that the school committee um, consider approving a position of safe schools and diversity, equity, and inclusion support specialist. This position would be funded in fiscal year 23 through SR3 funding and also we have enough ESSER three funding without um, taking anything away from the ESSER three funding that we intended to use for HVAC. We have enough ESSER three funding that we could fund the position through FY24. However, I anticipate that we may continue to get continuation grants in school safety. So there may be other grant funding sources that can sustain the position in FY24. The salary would be prorated. This would be a school year salary. What you're looking at is although it's not a unit A position because there is not a specific certification that we're looking for with this uh, position, the salary range that you're looking at is roughly um, from one place uh, of the unit A salary schedule to uh, depending on education and experience, uh, education beyond a bachelor's degree and experience. The Purpose, you can read the job summary. You can also see uh, qualifications and the goals of the job. But really, this is a way to have someone who can assist us in uh, moving forward our goals around school safety, uh, a culture of belonging, diversity, equity, and inclusion. So some specific examples of that could be responding to um, events where students need help mediating conflict. This individual would be at the lead of getting restorative justice um, implemented in concert with the building principles. Um, and we are looking for someone who um, would respond to times when students are frustrated, may have um, conflict or um, may be experiencing uh, dysregulation or other things that we can respond in a way that is considered trauma informed. So we're meeting the whole person, helping them to improve their behavior and supporting people. And you'll also see as part of this, this role is designed to work with families and not just students and try to understand um, if families are having experiences in our system that are not the kind of experiences that we want them to have, that this individual is somebody outside of kind of the building administration and the superintendent that families can go to and talk to about um, concerns that they might have, that there are factors that they think may be contributing to a struggle that their child may be having in school. I welcome any questions, um, again, requesting that this position, if it were approved, we would post for this position. Uh, I would, we would hire qualified, um, the, a qualified applicant and we would pay for the position through SR3 funding in fiscal year 23. Very so, good, Annie, um, mm -hmm. for presenting this. And um, I think you and I had spoken I, about a year ago about similar positions mm -hmm. that were DEI coach in nature and might um, span both buildings. Mm -hmm. Can you just mention, will this be a position that spans both buildings? Yes, yes, and, it will. Yeah, it okay. will. I will say that some of, you know, the what we're seeing is that Hopkins may see a little bit more support, but that may, may need additional support. But that we're seeing that across middle schools and high schools right now post pandemic. So yes, it is 
it's a it's district wide. It is for both buildings, but it is likely that um, that Hopkins and the students in Hopkins would require more support at this time. Very good, thank you, Christine. So, does this have any overlap with um, what Michelle's doing? Excellent question. Uh, it's complementary, but not exactly overlap. So Michelle's position example, what Michelle is doing um, with social emotional learning and multi-tiered systems of supports. So she's making sure that all of our systems stay up and running. So all of the universal screening, facilitating data meetings. Michelle works a great deal directly with staff. She does go into classrooms and she models the implementation of the social and emotional learning curriculum. She's also the lead on two of our grants, the mental health grant and our safe and supportive schools grant. Um, she has a lot of work directly with adults. This isn't to say that this person would not also support teachers in the building. This is also someone who works a lot more directly with students and families. So trying to bring in kind of student and family voice of, Yes, there may be some things that we need to address that can we look at, you know, the experiences that, that my family or my child is having, what might be contributing to that. So think a little bit more directed at students. Michelle does model, coach, go in and show lessons, but she does more working with teachers directly and setting up day to days, the schedules for MTSS interpreting the data with the teachers, making determinations about groupings for students, progress monitoring, and that's academic screenings and also our behavioral health screenings. So that's kind of a mm -hmm. distinction, but definitely complementary, right? There's, there, it's complementary. The slight distinction would be, this is a bit more student facing. Great, thank you. Wonderful question. Ethan, any comments or questions? Uh, no questions that I just, I, I think this is a, a, a great position, a great opportunity for our school system to become more inclusive and, and also to, to hopefully gain a little bit more better understanding of our, our community, our families, our students. Um, so I'm, I'm really excited about this. As am I, agreed. Um, this needs a vote. So do I hear a motion to approve? Is anyone else having? You froze for a minute, but you're back. You're back. But maybe so not. You're still frozen now. So if your internet is struggling, Christine, you might want to turn your camera off. That could help keep your voice on and turn your camera off. And that could help um, if your internet's going in and out. And unmute. Unmute. <laughs> there we go. Okay. All of a sudden, everybody just disappeared. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So do I hear a motion to approve? this position. Motion to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Terrific. Motion Thank passed. you very much. You're very welcome. Okay, um, we are moving on to the next item of our agenda slowly and steadily, the fiscal year 24 budget timeline. Annie. Chris and I will provide a uh, local contribution request to the town on December 16th. The local contribution request is uh, a portion of the budget, a significant portion, about 80%. It's not all of the budget. Uh, the town will not receive a line, like uh, a more in-depth budget prior to the school committee, just, um, but we will be sending that number over to them. Chris and I have not had a chance to finalize some of our numbers. Know that although the town, as always, is very generous and they have said, please ask for the budget that you need. We are also very mindful that the town has a lot of departments and a lot of responsibilities. So as we've demonstrated historically, we will make sure that that request is responsive to our needs, but also a responsible request. Um, and then we will bring that to you in December. Um, but I just wanted to let you know that that local contribution request is due to the town by December 16th and um, we'll have it to them by that time. Thank you, Annie and Chris. We look forward to seeing your recommendation in December. Uh, moving on to the next item, we have the NIASC accreditation update, Annie. Yes, uh, the Hopkins Academy is no longer on warning status. I've linked in the letter. Uh, they've done excellent work. So the staff needs to be commended, deserves to be commended for this as does um, the principal, but NIASC is really a group effort and requires 
a lot of hard work from the faculty. And so you can see um, the commission cites all the things that it's positive, that it's pleased to hear about at Hopkins Academy. And there is a long list there. Um, and that is again, joint effort of the teachers at Hopkins, the staff at Hopkins and the administration. So I just wanted the school committee to know that that is our status update and we will be going back for accreditation. Oh, goodness gracious. Um, time, right? Yeah, soon, <laughs> 2028. <laughs> 10 years time, 10 years time. Yes. Um, congratulations to you and to the, the uh, faculty and leadership at Hopkins. This was no easy feat. It's been a long time in the making and it's so nice to get a, an all clear. Uh, so thank you. Thanks. They did great work. Yeah. And, and I don't Ms. miss Pip was answer. a part of this. Oh was, yeah. Ms. Pip was a part of this. She knows. So thank you, Ms. Pip. <laughs> thank you. I don't miss it. <laughs> I miss the kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, moving on to the next item of our agenda, we are on to the business manager's report. Chris. Okay, so I have two reports for you tonight. Um, the first is the expense report. Um, just a couple of items I need to point out to you because I would imagine there might be um, some concern if you're looking at a few of the lines. Uh, especially on page six uh, of the report, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, we have special ed tuitions that are over budget, uh, one line by 30,000, another one by 171,000. Um, and I would imagine people are saying, yikes. Um, but really, it's just that um, DESE has been very slow in approving the grants. Um, the, the special ed 240 grant that we get is 170,000 alone. Um, and we also budgeted to use 175,000 in circuit breaker money, which none of these expenses have been transferred yet. So we'll actually wipe out that deficit as soon as the 240 grant is approved. Um, <clears throat> and it's not a question of if it will, just when um, they'll actually get to approve it. So, um, you know, as soon as we do that, I will transfer the, it, uh, the expenses over and we'll be looking much better then. Um, that's good news. And also I have a question for that kind of cash flow situation. Is it the town that is carrying the weight of that until that comes in? That's a very good question, actually. Um, the answer to that is, it's, I guess, kind of yes and no. Yes, they kind of are. But because we have, you know, if you look at the revolving accounts report, for example, We've got all of that money that's sitting there, uh, you know, essentially in the town coffers um, as backup, um, you know, so that the town doesn't actually go into a negative balance with their accounts uh, waiting for this grant money to come in. So, no, we're, we're still fine as far as that goes, but that's a good question. Very good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And on to the next document. Um, that would be the revolving accounts report. Um, so... Again, a couple of items I wanted to point out. Um, the first is the lunch account um, that we didn't get any of this year's deposits until November, uh, $32,000. So rather than showing that big drop from 154 down to 110, we're actually 154 down to about 142 and a half. So it's not, not nearly as big a drop as, as what it looks like on that report. Um, and the other item just to point out is the student activity account. You see there was a big increase um, in the month of October. We have that Washington DC trip um, and the check was written for that check a few days after the end of the month. So it's not reflected in that balance, but it was more or less just the money went in and the money went out a couple of days after the, uh, the end of the month. So you'll see that balance come down, obviously, um, when I do the November 30th balances for you. Um, and just, you know, the school choice balance, um, this is why we saw it for the, um, the camera system in the schools because we have a, a pretty healthy balance in that account. So um, I don't know if anyone's, anyone has any questions on the revolving accounts. No questions on my No end. questions. Mm -mm. Okay. And the grant report that I typically have for you by now, again, just with the slowness of, of the grant approvals, we're going to have a bunch of expense transfers over to them once they get approved, but 
essentially what I'd be showing you now is just a couple of grants on a page that we still haven't had any expenses for. So um, I would assume by, by the time we have our next meeting, these will be approved and, and I'll be able to report on them. Nothing to worry about, right? Absolutely nothing, nope. Okay, terrific. Thank you, Chris. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Moving on to school committee reports and discussion items, finance. I did a sanity check with Annie earlier this uh, this week and said there hasn't been a finance committee meeting since I began on this, <laughs> on this task, right? And she was like, no, I assure you, if there has, they've been meeting without me. So still no finance meeting or tri-board meeting. Um, Tara uh, was going to go to a CES meeting, and when she's back next month, we'll find out how it went. I'll also ask her to forward on any executive director reports that she receives. Those are chock full of updates, um, and we can get our hands on those. Um, policy, Ethan. Uh, yes, Christine and I have begun exploring the exciting world of school committee policies. Um, we looked at what looks like 13 earlier today, mm -hmm. uh, maybe 14 if we count uh, staff transportation. Um, and we will continue to do that throughout the year as we kind of examine all the policies uh, within the committee. And as you have recommended changes, you'll modify and bring those to us for first and Absolutely. second. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you for staying on top of that. I was a part of the team many years ago that um, undertook a review of policies that hadn't been touched in, I want to say like 10 years time. It was a big lift. And so it's really nice, Annie, that you keep us just going through them and just making sure that we never get into that situation again. Okay. Appreciate you guys doing it. Yeah. On to fields. We had Paul. We don't. Know. I can tell you quite quickly that as Chris knows, he's reached out to Carlos in order to get information about um, putting together a bid for the fields. We did hear from the uh, Community Preservation Committee today from Mary Thayer. Chris has uh, the information on how to submit bills. And I don't know if Carlos got back to you. Your cat got back to you. <laughs> this cat just loves to be on camera, I guess. So. <laughs> he invades the where school committee meetings too in the same way. Um, Carlos did get back to me this afternoon. Um, and it looks basically like we are probably in total um, a couple of months out of being able to go out to bid. Um, he said that it looks like January, they still have some conservation commission items that they just have to wait um, for approval on. And um, he expected to go out to bid in January and, and have the bidding opened in February and, and the winning vendor after that. So, um, you know, he did say that that would put us in pretty good timing for starting the project as soon as school gets out, like we did last time. So uh, we're looking good with that. He's aware at least that the money has been approved and, um, you know, the timeline we're looking to have. Great. Terrific. And for those who um, may not have been at town meeting and have not heard, um, we had um, our warrant article for the fields approved by the town. Um, we we're very appreciative and um, just so thrilled to be able to move forward with the final phase of the project. And thank you for everyone who um, worked to get out the vote and advocate for this important project to be completed. Really appreciate your uh, support. And finally, we have um, item E, capital, Christine. Uh, nothing to report. Uh, nothing will be happening until spring, so. Okay, very good, thank you. Um, moving on to item seven, announcements. Um, I don't see Joyce on the line, uh, but do any of my school committee colleagues have any announcements to make? Nope. No, not at this time. Okay, very good. Uh, Annie, you um, have- The calendar, the just always a reminder, <laughs> right? On the calendar, just always a reminder. On the 20th, we have the one hour delay, one hour early dismissal, the 20th of December. The 23rd is a half day prior to the December break, which uh, is that last week of December. 
Terrific. Annie, just a quick word on how the uh, the late dismissals or uh, the later start is going and the shared buffing situation between Hopkins Academy and Hadley Elementary. So the feedback we've heard from faculty and staff is that they appreciate the collaboration time. So they have found it quite useful. And I'm sure the principals will have an update at the end of the year of what um, what kinds of work that uh, teachers were doing during that time and staff was doing during that time. I have not heard from any students uh, angry that uh, they are being dismissed early or getting to come into school late. So uh, no negative feedback from them. And in terms of transportation, the single tier, which means everybody being picked up at once, uh, we have had some glitches. For example, the first time we did it, a driver was completely understandable and things are new. Driver did a route in reverse and we had to say, oh, okay, we gotta do it the other way. So we have had some glitches. Um, it is hard at this point to tell if those are entirely single tier or they're meaning having all the children on the bus together or are these glitches happening for other unrelated reasons, like not doing the route sheet as it's printed, or we've also had some issues with absenteeism and that's because sickness is still a big thing, right? Colds and flus and COVID. Um, so we'll keep our eye on it. And um, I will say that we have not had, one of the concerns that parents understood, understandably raised was, will there be issues with behavior if we're mixing older and younger children? So that concern, we haven't, we haven't seen anything like that. So that hasn't been an issue. It's just getting the roots and the times. Um, and this was kind of a test to see if and probably when the state passes the legislation around a later start time for high school, what options we might have at the district um, in transportation that could potentially A, reduce cost and B, allow us to share staff better. So we'll keep paying attention to how it's going. Very promising. Thank you uh, for keeping us abreast of that. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, moving on to action items. Um, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of October 24th? I make a motion. Do I hear a second? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes. Um, do I have a motion to approve the executive session minutes of October 24th? So moved. Mo oh. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, motion passes. Um, next, we have the approval of the warrants for October 2022. Do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Terrific. We've already voted on and approved the tech upgrades. Um, and Part of that was, did we authorize the use of school choice funding? I don't recall. Um, I don't recall if we did either because we recorded it, but I didn't write this wrote down a first and a second here. I think um, we might have voted on the, the installation of the tech upgrades themselves, perhaps not the use of school choice funding part of it. Um, to be safe, it yeah, might that'd be great. Thank you. To, uh, do I hear a motion to utilize school choice funding to cover the tech upgrades that we heard about this evening? So moved. Do I hear a second? Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. We've already approved the nature's classroom mm -hmm. field trip and we've already approved the new safe schools and DEI support specialist job description, um, as well as the use of ESSER funding fiscal year 23. Um, the next meeting dates, um, so we the fourth Monday falls around the time of the holidays. Mm -hmm. And there's, you know, there's only three of us on the line. So there's two others to, to factor in. That Monday is actually fine for me. It's the Monday after Christmas. I think it's going to be a pretty short meeting. The other thing is we could start earlier if it's around the holidays and people have time off, we could potentially start at one or, you know, 
nine in the morning. I'm, I'm open to it. I know, Annie, you have a conflict the Monday prior, which is usually what I we do. start looking at. Yeah, I do have a conflict the Monday prior, but if people were looking, if they wanted to stay out of that last week, I can't, um, I can do the evening of Wednesday, the 21st. I can do the evening of the 22nd. I don't imagine anybody wants to meet on a Friday, so I could do Wednesday or Thursday. Um, well, anytime I work for you, but I assume most of you all are at work. So I, that's why I said anytime on the 22nd or 20, 21st or 22nd. So Annie, can you um, do a poll? calendar? Yeah, yeah poll, I sure will. Pull all of us and uh, see mm -hmm. what works yeah. best between the 21st, 22nd or the 26th, yeah. especially looking at alternate times on the 26th that might allow sure. us to be up in evening. Sure thing. Happy to. Okay. Terrific. Okay. Um, do I hear a motion to adjourn this meeting? So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. I don't Aye. Know. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone.